Welcome back everyone to the one and only English news program as the news with me, Vanessa. Philippine and Indonesia agree ASEAN should be lead agent for change beyond regional geopolitics. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. met with his Indonesian counterpart, Joko Widodo, for a state visit focused on bolstering defense and diplomatic ties between the two neighbors. I emphasize the importance of strengthening the centrality and unity of ASEAN. Indonesia wants to ensure ASEAN keeps being the locomotive of stability, peace, and prosperity in the region. ASEAN needs to be able to resolve any challenge ahead and strengthen its honor of the ASEAN Charter. Speaking alongside Jokowi at the State Palace in Bogor, Marco said, the two spoke at length about the role that the ASEAN should play during a very volatile time in geopolitics, not only in the region but also in the rest of the world. We also spoke uh, at length about the role that uh, we believe ASEAN should play while we face the difficulties in this very volatile time in geopolitics, not only in our region but also in the rest of the world. And uh, we agreed that uh, ASEAN is going to be the lead agent in uh, the changes that uh, we would like to see in continuing to bring peace to our countries. Marcos said both agreed that the 10-member regional grouping should be the lead agent in the changes they would like to see. The trip by Marcos, the son and namesake of the late ruler who was overthrown in a popular uprising 36 years ago, was his first official venture overseas since his landslide election victory in May 2022. Increased demand for Thailand rice supplies caused by the Russia-Ukraine conflict. According to the latest government statistics that Thailand's rice exports reached a high of 4.75 million tons from January to July this year, a year-on-year -year increase of 53%. The Thai government says it expects the country's rice exports in 2022 to total 7.5 million tons, which will rank Thailand the second largest rice export in the world, only after India which has exported some 11.23 million tons of rice from January to August 2022. According to a spokesperson of the Thai government, the main causes of the Thai rice export growth are the evaluation of the path, which makes the price of the Thai rice more competitive in the international market and the increasing demand for Thai rice supply caused by the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The export of Thai rice to Central and West Asian countries have increased significantly. Iraq has become the largest importer of Thai rice. Global food systems have been facing unprecedented stress since the outbreak of Russia-Ukraine conflict. Developing countries are in urgent needs of a stable international situation. Russia and Ukraine signed the Black Sea Crane Initiative respectively with Turkey under the United Nations auspices in July, which has allowed significant volumes of commercial food and fertilizer export from three key ports in the Black Sea, namely Odessa, Chernomorsk and Yuzhny. At the same time, Russia and the United Nations also signed a Memorandum of Understanding on promoting the export of Russian agricultural products to world markets, which is an optimistic signal for the world's food security. South Korea offers talks with North Korea to discuss reunion of separated families. South Korea offered talks with North Korea to discuss a reunion of families separated by the 1950-53 Korean War in its first direct overture under President Yoon suk yeol despite strained cross-border ties. Unification Minister Kwon yung se who is in charge of inter-Korean affairs, urged a swift, positive response, saying Seoul will consider Pyongyang's preferences in deciding the date, venue, agenda and format of the talks. Honor. Today, the South Korean government offers talks with North Korea to discuss a reunion of separated families. We hope that responsible officials of the two sides will meet in person as soon as possible for a candid discussion on humanitarian matters including the issue of separated families. Hoshim 
The surprise proposal came days before the Thanksgiving holidays of Chuseok, when the two Koreas have held family reunions before. But prospects remain unpromising, with the North refusing to deal with Yoon's administration. The last round of family reunions took place in 2018. Typhoon Weaver destroys Japan's South Island. Typhoon Weaver brought heavy rain and violent winds and official warnings of high waves as it passed close to Ishigaki Island in Japan's Okinawa Prefecture. The national broadcaster NHK reported officials from the Japan Meteorological Agency warned that winds near a storm center could reach speeds of up to 144 km per hour or 89 meter per hour, with gusts of up to 216 km per hour or 134 meter per hour. Weaver, the 12th storm of this year's Pacific typhoon season, is expected to continue traveling north toward the east coast of China over the coming days. The storm follows on the hills of the typhoon Hinamor, which pounded parts of the westernmost main Japanese island of Kyushu with heavy rain in a week earlier and forced flight cancellations. South Korean police arrest a packet of murdering of the New Zealand children. The Korean National Police Agency said South Korean police arrested the woman, a Korean-born New Zealander, in the southeastern city of Uslan earlier on the day after Global Police Agency Interpol issued a red notice. Meanwhile, authorities said the woman is suspected of fleeing to South Korea in 2018 after killing her then 7-year-old and 10-year-old children in Auckland. She denied the charges raised against her. The suspect told reporters as she was escorted out from police station in Uslan that they did not do it. Then officials said a South Korean court will review whether to extradite the suspect to New Zealand. New Zealand police launched a homicide inquiry in Auckland after the remains of the children were found by a family going through the contents of a storage locker they had purchased unseen. China and Kazakhstan vow to jointly promote cooperation in various areas. China and Kazakhstan agreed to further deepen cooperation in various areas such as economy, trade, production capacity, connectivity and fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. The agreement was reached during the talks between Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Kazakh counterpart Kasim Jomar Tokayev at the Ak Orda Presidential Palace in Ur-Sultan after Xi's arrival. During talks, she pointed out that over the past three decades, since China and Kazakhstan established diplomatic ties, the bilateral relationship has stood the test of the changing international landscape, achieving greater substance, higher levels and more fruitful outcomes. Meanwhile, Tokayev expressed warm congratulations to China on its great development achievements under the leadership of President Xi and wished the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China a full success. Tokayev said the fact that President Xi chooses to visit Kazakhstan on his first overseas trip since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of China-Kazakhstan diplomatic relations. After the talks, she attended the welcoming banquet hosted by Tokayev and the two leaders had an in-depth exchange on issues of shared interest. And that's the presentation for today. Hope to see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your weekdays ahead.